Okay, let's move on to the, uh, the second activity. Uh, the second activity is, is called the world, and this is a great opportunity for uh, some cross-curriculum work, maybe a bit of geography, some uh, revising countries, revising continents, revising north, south, east, and west, revising uh, the words ocean and sea, uh, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific, and so on, uh, but at the same time, uh, focusing on a particular uh, language structure. So in this activity, students will be listening to uh, some words. Depending on the, the age and the level, I'm going to show you an example with, with five words, but it could be eight or ten. And students need to think about uh, in which country or region uh, you could write those particular words. So students are making a connection between a word and uh, a place in the world where they think that word uh, could actually go. So as an example, if we gave the uh, students uh, scuba diving, maybe they would connect scuba diving with the Red Sea because there are so many fish there. Other students might put scuba diving um, in the, uh, the Mediterranean Sea because they've had an experience of it. Of course, it doesn't, it doesn't matter where the student decides to put the word. The most important thing, of course, is that they can give us uh, a reason uh, for why they put the, the word in that particular place. And this is where we, uh, we, we come to the, the fourth bullet point, discuss um, with your partners and give reasons for the choices about where they put the words. Okay, now often in, uh, in a speaking activity, um, uh, where we ask students to discuss something, uh, particularly our, our less able students, our low achievers, maybe they have problems um, in actually coming up with uh, reasons for their choices. So I think it's very, very important that we give our students um, uh, the, the key functional language that they're going to need uh, in order to do the activity. So here are some examples of um, the language uh, which students could practice. For example, they need the question form, where did you put scuba diving? Or where did you put uh, X, Y, Z. And of course, a question immediately becomes communicative if we also supply the answer to the question. So the answer to that particular question, I put scuba diving in the Red Sea, or I put X, Y, Z in Russia, or I put ABC in, um, in Europe. We also need to give the students the language to ask uh, the follow-up question. And here we have, why did you put scuba diving there? Why did you put scuba diving uh, in uh, the Red Sea? And then the answer to that question, to make it communicative, I chose the Red Sea because, and of course any number of uh, answers are possible. And a couple more little bits of functional language which will be useful in a, in a discussion. I agree, I disagree, and so did I, and I didn't. So it's important to give our students this functional language um, as a fallback in case they have problems uh, when they're actually doing the activity. So make sure you practice this language with your students first uh, before they actually do the activity. Of course, stronger students won't need it, but less able students will rely uh, on this functional language in order to do the activity. So how does it work? Well, it's great if you can show your students a map of the world but it's not essential, you don't have to have it, uh, but if you can uh, show them a map of the world, even provide them with a map of the world, that would be great. Of course, many course books nowadays um, uh, will have a map of the world in them, or many course books that you're using for English or maybe another language, or maybe the students have a geography book, uh, any of those are possible. Uh, the idea is that students write on the map um, the words which you're you're going to be uh, giving them. For example, scuba diving, I would write that uh, in, in the Red Sea. And here are my words uh, for, for the example. We've got scuba diving, we've got cricket, uh, we've got uh, basketball and table tennis uh, and, and football. Now, if you don't have access uh, to a map, it doesn't matter, you can still do the activity. What I ask students to do if we don't have a map available is to write the word that I tell them scuba diving, cricket, basketball, and next to it, write the country or the region or the sea or the place where they think that word um, is actually connected. So next to scuba diving, we would write um, uh, 
uh, Red Sea. Next to cricket, we're going to put India or Pakistan. Next to basketball, and, and so on and so forth. So, why have we chosen these uh, five particular words? Well, we've chosen scuba diving, cricket, basketball, table tennis, and football because they're in the course book. Uh, these are words which we want to recycle. Uh, alongside the, the grammar which we're practicing in this activity. And the grammar, as we saw on the previous slide, is where did you put, I put, why did you put. So we've got past tense WH uh, questions and uh, their answers.